Serbia and her neighbors in the whirlwind of Bulgarian-Byzantine wars. During the first decades of the 9th century, Serbia enters political stage as the country where political relations between Bulgaria and Byzantium are increasingly reflected. Duke Vlastimir is on the Serbian throne during the 830s. He is the heir of an ancient Serbian ruling family and the first ruler about whose political activities we can say a bit more. Sometime in the beginning, during the 830s, Vlastimir gave his daughter to be married to Krajina, son of Beloje, Župan of Trevunia. As a confirmation of this new alliance created by marriage, he elevated his father-in-law to be the Duke. This was the first sign that a Serb ruler conducts foreign policy as a dominant force among Serb dukedoms. However, this act conceals something much more important. That is the image of Serbia, where Christian teaching has penetrated and around which an idea of authority is clearly defined. In order for a Serb ruler to be able to elevate a ruler of another state to a higher title, he had to completely belong to the Christian world and the teaching that made clear how these things were done. This is a full Christian hierarchy of ruling. A Serb ruler was confirmed by the Byzantine Emperor and, by authority of the Byzantine Basileus, appointed rulers of states subservient to him. Therefore, this act of marriage and elevation of the father-in-law into the title of Duke confirms that, several decades before Basileus I, Serbia was the Christian country. At the time, around 845, the military agreement that Bulgarians and Byzantines signed in 816 was about to expire. The Constantinopolis throne was occupied by the underage Michael III, so the Byzantine authorities had to look for prospective allies for the future clash with Bulgarians. It seems that Serbs were chosen by regions in Constantinople, for Constantine Porphyrogenitus remarked that the Bulgarian Khan, Presiam, decided to attack the Serbs. For Constantine Porphyrogenitus, not without a triumphal note, writes that Presiem not only achieved nothing, but that he also, in the three years of war against the Serbs, lost most of his army. Through this war, Serbia was dragged into the complicated political relations between Bulgaria and Byzantium, where she was going to play an important role as the Byzantine ally. It seems that the war started by Presiem did not end in a peace treaty, as his son and successor, Boris, attacked Serbs again probably in an attempt to avenge his father's defeat. At the time, there was also a change on the throne in Serbia. Vlastimir was succeeded by his sons, Mutimir, Stroimir and Gojnik. The supreme ruler was Mutimir, while his brothers shared power.
The large Bulgarian army, that probably entered Serbia from the direction of Ras, fell into an ambush. In the ferocious battle, Bulgarian army suffered a devastating blow and Serbs managed to capture Boris's eldest son, Vladimir, and 12 prominent boyars. This was a serious defeat of the Bulgarian Khan, who, according to Porfirogenitus, even against his own wishes, started negotiations in order to recover the respected captives. Vladimir and 12 boyars were accompanied to Ras, Serbian-Bulgarian border at the time, by Mutimir's sons, Stephen and Bran. Mutimir's sons were present at the Boris's explicit request because he feared for the safety of his own son, Vladimir. Therefore, we can assume that Mutimir was the supreme ruler in Serbia, as his Bulgarian counterpart asked for his sons to be present as a guarantee of the safe passage of Bulgarian prisoners. It seems that an agreement between Bulgarians and Serbs was concluded at the meeting near Ras. Gifts were exchanged as well. Serbs presented Boris with two hawks, two hounds and 50 fur coats. Bulgarian Khan reciprocated with rich gifts as well. A short time after this meeting, there was a conflict in the Serbian ruling family. Mutimir exiled his brothers Stroimir and Gojnik to Bulgaria and continued to rule alone. He kept in Serbia only Peter, his brother Gojnik's son, who will within a few years flee to Croatia. Soon afterwards, a lively diplomatic activity of the Byzantine Emperor Basil I followed. After 867, Basil I formally subjugated all the rulers of the Serb dukedoms, with the exceptions of Neretlians, to himself. Mutimir officially became a protégé of the Byzantine Emperor. During his long reign, until 891, Serbia had good neighborly relations with Byzantium and Bulgaria. It is quite probable that, during Mutimir's rule, Serbia had the leading role among all the Serb dukedoms. Only after his death, there would be a change in the conduct of the rulers of other surrounding dukedoms, Zahumje in the first place, which will try to remain beyond the reach of the Serbian ruler. During Mutimir's rule, Peter, Gojnik's son, who was kept as hostage by Mutimir when his father was exiled to Bulgaria, managed to escape into Croatia. His destiny in Croatia is not really known. However, it seems that he was very well received since, immediately upon his return, in 892, he managed to gain power in Serbia. After Mutimir died, he was inherited by his sons, Prvoslav Bran and Stephen. The eldest one, Prvoslav, was the supreme ruler. However, only after a year, Peter